It was the dawn of the third age of mankind. Ten years after the Earth Minbari War. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Mike here at Game From Scratch and as you may be able to guess from the intro we are talking about Babylon. Not Babylon 5 the series but Babylon JS version 5 which just released today. What you see in front of you is a brand new demo they just released to showcase the capabilities of this uh, and so that you know this is running entirely inside of my browser. Yes this is a JavaScript slash TypeScript game engine. Um, it's very capable and powerful uh, in its capabilities. Point blank, if I was going to be creating a 3D game uh, that was done in the browser, I am a terrible shot, by the way. Uh, I would either be using uh, this or Play Canvas. Those are the two top 3D options. Or I suppose there's also 3JS if I wanted to do a lot of the work myself. But I don't want to do a lot of the work myself. So that is where something like Babylon JS is really nice. And on top of that, uh, this is also a very robust framework, as we're going to see in just a second. So we're going to leave the demo now. Uh, the source code to that should be available any minute now. Right now, the GitHub link is broken. It is launching today as we speak. So Babylon 5 JS5 is here. There is a lot of new functionality in here. There is a new node editor. You can play around with some of the new features in the sandbox. Uh, we have web GPU support here. We're going to see that in just a second. There are tools in place for doing native development. So you don't need to worry about that whole, oh, I'm developing it for a browser. You can actually have much faster native code uh, support. Uh, using their uh, native implementation. So this will be able you to run it on iPhone, Android phones as well. And you should get more towards native support, native integration. There is this new demo we saw here to start things off to demonstrate the new features of Babylon JS5. Unfortunately, this link currently doesn't work. Hopefully by the time this video is live, you can check out that repository. There's also a new animation curve editor, new performance profilers, Unlimited morph target supports, a new GUI editor um, for making your UI layer, uh, order independent transparency, web XR improvements, new node material nodes, new node material, okay, yeah, I actually said that right. Uh, improved GLTF support, mixed reality toolkit for Babylon JS if you're doing VR, AR um, support, the asset librarian, a huge library of free Creative Commons zero assets that you could work from, a material plugin manager, and let's go take a look at the few things. Now, this first one here is the node material editor. This gives you a way of um, visually creating, as you can see, if you wish to, very complex shader nodes. We go here at the end result, uh, and you can see the frag shader, the pixel shader being generated as a result of this. There's also, I think, Think? Oh no, this is fragment only. Uh, you can also do it to make vertex shaders, etc. This is a very complex example, but you can see how all these various different uh, nodes can go together uh, to create. And what we're doing in this particular case is creating this grid that you see in action over here. Here are all of the various different nodes that are available to you. One of the really nice things you're going to find with Babylon JS in general is it is exceptionally well documented and there are a ton of examples available. On that topic, here is another one of the new examples. This is web GPU support. So what you're seeing over here on the right, this is being generated using the new web GPU features. This is the, um, uh, future of rendering, this is sort of like, I think you could think of it as Vulkan in the browser. So instead of WebGL going forward, we potentially use WebGPU. Unfortunately, WebGPU is only supported in a very limited number of browsers at this moment in time, specifically um, Chrome Canary Mode and Edge Canary Mode. You also need to turn it on. Once you've done so, you will find WebGPU as a drop-down option over here. So to check out some of the new examples, uh, you can uh, do so in the WebGPU part of the playground. The playground, we'll get back to in a second, is a very very cool aspect of learning uh, to work with Babylon JS. And here you can see the code in action over here. So there's actually quite a bit of code behind uh, what you're seeing going on over here. And then we've got controllers over. So you get an idea of what we could do here. Let's go here and change the wind speed a bit. And there you can see our C's obviously got a whole lot rougher. Um, so if you're looking towards the future support, Web GPU is here. Unfortunately, it's in a very small subset of browsers. But as you can see from what we've got here, you've got a ton of um, configurability and options here. Basically, anything that you've seen or fathomed on, so we can control our swells as well. Anything you saw or fathomed on, um, say, Shader Toy, you'll be able to recreate it in Babylon.js, no problems at all, uh, using Web GPU. Kind of cool stuff. Uh, so that is a new demo they have available. They have a couple of other demos available as well, showcasing the new Web GPU functionality. But that is another thing that was added in Babylon.js 5. On top of that, there is the Playground generally. So there is a Web GPU option. You can also switch this back out to just uh, 
WebGL 2, if you so wish. And here you can see some simple code over here, and you can see the results of it over here. So for example, if I wanted to change this, I can change the lighting, and it should, should even, oh no, I need to play. Uh, you can change it out here. So let's say diameter of our sphere, we'll change that out to four, and boom. It increases so it's an interactive playground where you can come in and learn how to use babylon js uh, so you've got code editing over here the cool thing here is you can also go ahead and download the stuff that you wish uh, but if we come kind of over here to this bookmark right here you have a number of examples to get things started so say you want to learn how to load a 3d model and play animation you can you know there is the immediate result another neat thing is you're going to notice with the editor so for example here when they're using colors you get the special mode here where you actually have an inline editor that you can pop up and change the values. I don't know what I'm actually, oh, that's the, the, the lighting. So you can change the values using these visual editors and then run your result and then immediately see the result right there. So, and I think also you do get code completion like so. So this playground is a great way to learn how to work with Babylon JS. Um, it's a nice embedded editor. It's actually pleasant to work with. And as you can see, uh, you can actually get feedback pretty close to immediately. You can also use uh, TypeScript or JavaScript. So we're gonna go switch here. Here is the TypeScript uh, example. Now, unfortunately, uh, when I switched over to, uh, I suppose I switched over to JavaScript mode here, you're gonna see um, it reloaded. So then you have to come back in here and change it. But you got a choice between TypeScript and JavaScript views of uh, the examples that are available. There are a ton of examples here. So for example, there's one here with um, picture in picture using the old Sponza example. Uh, and you can drill down into it right there. We can see in a second, it's gonna load up Sponza, um, the Sponza scene. By the way, if you didn't see that, I did a video about this a couple of, uh, about two weeks back now. There is a brand new version of Sponza, super high definition. Uh, if you wanna go ahead and check that out, it's pretty neat. So here you can see, again, the level result. For some reason, the mouse doesn't work uh, in this particular example. Um, but you can see, again, all the code available here to load this and, and do the picture in picture and the camera support that you see here. And any one of these things, if you want to learn more about it, there is a documentation link, which will actually bring you to, well, predictably enough, the documentation. This is a very well-documented engine, and that's always appreciated. Um, in terms of what is new in 5, there is a ton there. We, we talked about uh, a, a majority of the big ones here. So we now have infinite morph targets. Animated, there's an animation curve editor in here now. Support for conditional block for node materials. Improved performance when using shadows. Cascading shadow generator. Support for up to six UV sets uh, in the standard PBR and node materials. Uh, there's now a GUI editor to build your own uh, UI controls. Added support for order independent transparencies. A vertex animation textures with baked vertex animation manager. Material plugin manager. Official support for web GPU and the new performance profilers in there as well. And then a bunch of uh, smaller changes, but there is a ton in this particular release. It's probably one of the biggest releases they've done in several years. Um, in terms of the documentation, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, Babylon.js has exceptional documentation. So this is it. Uh, I'll have this linked in the linked article down below if you want to learn more about it. So if you want to come in, learn how to do particles, you just basically drill down in here. This code example is there. The cool thing here is they also continuously have these links like this one, which will bring you into the playground and actually show you the stage that you are at with the code running. So you can always jump between the two, learn more about what's going on at any time you can jump on back here. So then we add the fountain in here and you see there is the next step in the process. Um, this this documentation, uh, the step-by-step -step process of it, and then the fact that you can jump into and play with the code in the playground at any time uh, is somewhat invaluable. And what you're gonna find is it goes through all the way. So say here you're doing post-processing effects, uh, there's going to be a number of post-processing examples you can jump into. So if you wanna see how to do a blur effect, we can click here and we're actually gonna see it in line. Like so, there is the blur being actually applied. So you can see examples of it, or I can again click right here and we'll see the code from the playground to go ahead and see how that blur is working. Uh, so the uh, documentation for Babylon is again, probably among the best that's out there. If not, and this is a bold statement, it may actually be the best documentation out there, at least for a game engine and definitely for an HTML5 game engine. This is impressive stuff. Um, so that is it. If you're wondering, this is an open source project. It's under the Apache 2 license which is definitely a um, liberal license, what it allows you to do. This release is very hot off the presses in terms of 37 minutes ago, 5.5.5 was just released. Um, 
which is weird because I think the last official version was 4.x. So I don't know why they jumped up to that versioning level. And we're sticking with the Babylon 5. Otherwise, it ruins my joke in my title screen. Uh, if you want to grab it, the CDN information is here. Again, the documentation is all there. You can use this with a node-based application. Also, do keep in mind, they do have that native version. So if you come here and look at their repositories, uh, you're going to find other options such as Babylon native. So this is if you want to work in C++ land for some reason, uh, this will enable you to use Babylon uh, but native code. So if you need that better performance or you prefer to work with C++, uh, this is an option that is available for you out there. Another couple of projects you may be interested in noting, this one specifically, which I believe I already have open, there is an editor out there. So if you need to have a traditional um, Unity type editing experience, there is an editor available. It does have Visual Studio Code integrated into it. There is Visual Node graphing uh, being built into it. Again, that is in beta format right now. It is entirely open source as well, but you can go ahead and download that for a number of platforms. So there is an editing environment for this. Another interesting thing to note is if you come back to the repositories, you're also going to find uh, some tooling here. So for example, um, we've got importers for Unity available right here. Blender exporter available right there. So there are a number of tools out there to be aware of. Now, interestingly enough, as I'm doing this video, this just showed up. Uh, so this is again, oh no, that's AR version. Uh, so Space Pirates, here, no, here, this just showed up. This wasn't available before, so this has now been made public. So if you do want to check out that source code for that Space Pirates example we saw at the very beginning, um, it is available now up on, uh, on GitHub, or at least it is currently being made available because as you can see, there's no description yet and there is no license yet. So I think we're seeing them upload it in real time. But hopefully by the time this video gets up, uh, Space Pirates demo that we started everything off with, uh, oops, where we go. This guy right here, uh, it should now be available. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and check that out, uh, you can do so. It does showcase some of the capabilities of Babylon uh, JS 5, uh, definitely a nice release. It's a framework I've always liked. And again, if I was going to do 3D development and my primary platform was the browser, I think this is what I would choose. But if I wanted, again, more of a, an all-in-one integrated interface, uh, maybe I would consider Play Canvas, but those are the number one and number two recommendations. So if you're looking at doing browser-based 3D work, I either check out Babylon JS, check out Play Canvas, or heck, check out both. I've covered both of them fairly extensively on this channel in the past, if you want to learn more. So let me know what you think of Babylon JS 5. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.